the idea for this particular session came from my experience of transitioning from quant to qual. I really vividly recall how completely confused I was when I first started reading about qualitative data analysis. Quantitative analysis is a very clear step-by-step -step linear process. So I expected qualitative analysis to be the same. What I discovered instead was a process that seemed to be done differently by different researchers. Uh, there were a lot of unclear back and forth processes involved. And even worse, the textbooks that I read said a lot of vague things like themes will emerge from the data. And I remember thinking, you've got to be kidding me. How on earth does that work? Do they jump off the page and hit you? Much to my astonishment, though, themes do indeed emerge from the data. And my aim today is to show you through some really practical examples how exactly that might work. Now, before I get underway with uh, telling you a little bit about the content for today, um, I'm just going to run the first of our polls for this morning. So I've got a few of these uh, today. I'm just going to launch the first one on the screen. So if you could have a look at the options there, it would just be helpful for me to know a little bit about how experienced uh, everyone is. And So I've got everything from you're an absolute newbie through to you're an expert, so you might be in the wrong course. Uh, now, if anyone attending today is on a mobile device, uh, then you may not get the options to vote. Uh, so I can see that we've actually got two-thirds of the vote in, it's possible that the remaining people, oh no, we got just that last uh, few people in now. So that's wonderful, that's interesting as well. Everyone has voted for the same thing. So I'll just close and share that with you all. So everyone is an absolute newbie, so you're in good company this morning. It's always nice to know that you're not the only person that's a newbie at uh, learning something. Uh, and that's really helpful for me. It'll actually make it a lot easier in terms of pitching some of the content today. Lovely. Well, I do have a, a couple more of those uh, during the course of today, but I'll just close that one for now. So we'll be starting out with a very brief introduction to qualitative data analysis, just in terms of the general processes involved. And then the bulk of today's session uh, will be around the data analysis process. And within that, I'll be presenting my own model of data analysis. I mentioned earlier that qualitative researchers all have different ways they approach the analysis process. It's actually quite personalised. So my intention is to show you how I approach the task, and hopefully that's going to give you some ideas of your own that you can put into practice. We'll then talk about memos. Uh, they can play a role in various stages of the data collection and analysis process. And we'll finish off talking about some logistics, such as whether or not you should use software, how to prepare your data. And at the end, I do have some resources that you might find helpful after today. Now, lastly, a final note about the content. I will be focusing on text-based data today. So, for example, interviews, field notes, uh, observations, documents. Qualitative research, though, is constantly evolving. I'm really aware there are lots of other data types, um, such as images and video. We do have a lot to cover within the two hours that we have, so I'm not going to be able to get into non-text data formats, but certainly the techniques that we're talking about today, um, in particular techniques such as coding, can be applied to those other data types if you have them. So let's start out by talking about what qualitative data analysis actually involves. Qualitative research often involves huge amounts of data. Uh, when I talk to researchers who are in the midst of analysing qualitative data, they often say things like they're drowning in data or they just feel like they're treading water to stay afloat. And I think this is really reflective of the nature of qualitative data and just how difficult it can be to manage. 
So the idea behind qualitative data analysis is that some sort of transformation takes place within those huge volumes of data. Now there is debate amongst qualitative researchers as to exactly what that transformation involves. So for some, it's simply sorting and retrieving, whereas for others, interpretation and retelling are important. I think for myself as a qualitative researcher, I believe both of those aspects are an important part of the analysis process. So it's not just about sorting and retrieving, putting things into boxes and finding them later. I think you then need to go on and interpret and retell from there. I think you'd probably find most researchers would agree with me on that point. Now when you do have a large volume of data, it's just going to be impossible to report on everything. So some sort of analysis must take place in order for you to reduce it. That creates a meaningful output and that can then be conveyed to other people. Something that's quite unique to qualitative analysis is that unlike quant, you can actually start your analysis as soon as you have some data. You don't actually need to wait until the end. Another really interesting thing about the qual process is it's a cyclical one, not a sequential one. Now, that caused me no end of problems when I was preparing this particular presentation because uh, PowerPoint slides are obviously very sequential. So I'm trying to present a process that's cyclical and back and forth in a sequential way. So uh, you have to bear with me on that front and uh, sort of picture some of these back and forth processes on the slides. Now, another thing that's quite unique about qualitative data analysis is there are lots of different possible approaches and they all have their own very distinct sequence of stages and steps. So just to give you a few examples, um, you can approach qualitative data analysis using grounded theory, uh, content analysis, interpretive phenomenological analysis, that's always a mouthful, I have to take a breath before I say that one, uh, discourse analysis and narrative analysis. And they're actually just some of the examples of different analysis approaches. There's literally hundreds of them. Now we don't have time today to go through all of those. They're all quite detailed um, and would probably take two hours, if not a whole day, just to focus on a single one of them. So I'll be discussing a more general approach to qualitative analysis, just in relation to some of the steps that are involved. And I'll also be talking about how you might code thematically. After today, you'll need to go away and decide whether or not you are going to take a more general approach, such as the one that I'm presenting today, or whether you'll take a more specific approach, such as IPA or content analysis.